This is the brand new Merida E160. I tested this bike for a Swedish site, but they gave me a go ahead to use this material for my own YouTube channel as well. So here is this review in English. There will be a lot of voiceovers here, but I think you will enjoy this review anyway. This is the latest iteration of the E160. The previous model was introduced about three or four years ago, and I spent some time on that bike too. There is a lot that has changed since then. The previous model had a 160mm fork, but it's grown to 170mm on this bike. That's in line with many other Enduro EMTBs, and it seems to be the new standard length. At the same time, the head tube length has decreased somewhat, and that leaves more room to use spacers to find the right stack height. But it's in the rear end we find the biggest changes. The shock is now moved to under the top tube, and is also turned 90 degrees. That makes space for a range extender, a big water bottle, and some tools or an inner tube. It is now also possible to run this bike as a full 29er. The Merida is shipped with a 27.5 inch wheel in the rear, but with this flip chip you can use a 29 inch wheel in the rear too, if you rather prefer that. The rear travel is now over 170mm, so this bike is now on its way to become a super enduro bike in my opinion. And finally we come to the most controversial detail on the new Merida, and that's this flex day design. With this sort of suspension design, we will usually find a horse link down here somewhere to mitigate the effects of the brake forces and chain growth. But here it's a flex day instead, both in the aluminium version and the carbon version. As mentioned, the E160 is also available in carbon. This is an aluminium bike. In a way, they are two different bikes. The weight and battery size differ, and the carbon bike is more of a lightweight race bike, while the bike that I'm testing is more of a long range version. The battery size found on the carbon bikes are at 600 watt hours. They are not removable in the interest of saving weight and making the frame stiffer. This bike weighs 26 kilos, and there are a few reasons for that. The battery size is 750 watt hours and the optional range extender at 360 watt hours will add up to over 1100 watt hours. The internal battery can easily be removed, which is great if you keep your bike in a shed or something, since bike batteries shouldn't be exposed to low temperatures. There are proper tires, proper wheels and proper brakes. It's even a double D casing in the rear. There is a tool here and the STV ZO certified light as standard. The frame itself is very sturdy, and I think here is where we will find at least a kilo of extra weight compared to the carbon frame. With 26 kilo, it's of course important that the suspension works as it should, so let's take this bike for a spin. bike to my local trail first and later to a bike park to make this as a thorough test as possible. But I immediately feel that something isn't right here. This is not what a big heavy monster bike normally feels like. The weight is noticeable in quick changes of direction, but this bike feels a lot more playful than the previous E160. I usually experience pop and liveliness in more lightweight bikes with less travel. The E160 is all of that. At the same time, that long travel soaks up everything, making any rough trail smooth as hell. I feel like a lot better rider than I am, even if I know that it's the bike that has my back when I do poor line choices. Scary descents are not that scary anymore. It's more like a fun feature than anything. It's a bike with very few limits, that is also great fun to ride. A not so much talked about advantage with EMTBs is the commute to local trails. This is a very long and boring ascent to the area that I used to ride in. It's a hurdle that is not very fun to overcome with an analog enduro bike. But with an EMTB it takes no time to climb this hill and I still have enough energy to enjoy all the trails up here.
time for some fun in the bike park. There is a lift here, but since I've got 750 watt hours available, I will use that instead. The motor is the latest and greatest from Shimano. It's a EP801. There is an extra 20% peak power and I experienced it to be less noisy too. It feels very natural to ride without any sudden unwanted bursts of power surges when you don't want them. Simply put, there is power and control. I like the motor and the fun climbs, but there is something we need to address here. And that's the suspension, which is quite something. The first test is a pop and play test on a flow trail. I figure this bike, despite its long travel, is a great flow trail bike too. I'm not really prepared for the amount of pop in this first little jump. Jesus! <laughs> The bike just flies when other long travel bikes kind of soaks up the energy. You can have the cake and eat it too, it seems. I don't know how a big and heavy ENTB can be this poppy. Maybe there's some wizardry going on with that flex day or something. The feedback from the rear end is up there with the best despite the mid-range suspension components on this version of the E160. The next test is a more suitable Enduro trail. Not the steepest trail, but very chunky. I rode this trail three times, and every time I asked myself why I didn't go faster. This bike doesn't need brakes, and I'm very close to talk about that magic carpet cliché. Again, top-notch suspension design, up there with the very best on the ELTB market. It's a noticeable difference from some of the lesser competitors. The E160 is hilarious on fast flow trails too, even if the suspension travel is overkill. In this last little test, we're collecting frequent flyer points. And this is the final nail in the coffin for you who are still questioning the lively and poppy characteristics. I'm not the best jumper in the world, but this is the first time I land flat on the other side, even if this is my first somewhat cautious jump for the season. I've already made up my mind about what type of bikes I like. I thought I was done with mullets and heavier EMTBs, and I don't fully understand what is happening here. Could it be that well thought out suspension kinematics, Trump's head tube angles and suspension travel? Have I dwelled too much over reach and chain stay lengths? Maybe focused on the wrong things. And if this aluminium bike feels like this, what will the top end carbon bikes feel like? There are too many thoughts going through my head right now and I decide to try out a different sized bike. The first E160 was a size large, or long as Merida calls it. This is a size medium which actually doesn't feel any smaller than the bigger Merida. I'm 185 centimeters tall and perhaps I should have a size large bike. But some say that you're better off with a smaller bike size when it comes to EMTBs. I would probably have chosen this size after all. I haven't mentioned that much about components, and maybe that's a bit intentional. There is a lot of personal preference when it comes to components, and of course there are different versions available at different price levels. But this particular bike is well specced overall, with Shimano XT things in most places and appropriate RockShox components when it comes to suspension. Hey. 